Hi, it's Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky with my plans and pans for the week. Well, I started out my day with a rally and press conference in person downtown with labor leaders and, and workers, with Chuy Garcia, congressman also, and we were there in solidarity with the Amazon workers in Bessemer, Alabama. They are trying to form a union. And of course, Jeff Be Bezos, the uh, richest man in the world, sometimes he falls to second place. Um, while he does provide a $15 minimum wage, the working conditions are just terrible. Now he denies it, but Workers are saying they actually, when they have to go to the bathroom, it's in a bottle because you can't lose too much time off the floor. So we were there. There were rallies around the country. Uh, Bernie Sanders actually went to Alabama to stand with the, uh, with the workers. They are voting right now by mail, which is good. Um, to see if there are enough people who will agree, the workers, to form, to form the, the union. Well, what we're doing in Congress is we passed, actually for the second time last year and now this year, the PRO Act, Protect Our Right to Organize, which would really change everything. If they had a union instead of union busters that are doing everything they can to, to stop it, they would have dignity on the job. Um, they would have some say over not only wages, but working conditions. Um, and so I was so happy and so proud to, uh, to be there today. So this week was very busy with committees. It was called Committee Week, and almost every single day we had a different committee. I am back in Evanston, and so all of it was done virtually, but we got it all done. Um, the, the first one was about the Lift America Act, full committee of the Energy and Commerce Committee. And our part of it, um, our part was about a piece of the infrastructure bill that we're going to pass, another enormous bill that we are going to pass in the House for sure, hopefully also in the, uh, in the Senate, that will put literally millions of people back to work in the United States of America. The part that the Energy and Commerce Committee is playing is that what, what we are doing is, for example, a piece of it is to make sure that all Americans have access to clean drinking water. Um, that we can uh, help our hospital and healthcare infrastructure, modernizing and some building some new hospitals and community health centers. So it was a, a, a very long hearing, but really a rewarding one because we passed a number of pieces of this, this bill that are gonna make a difference um, in the economy that we have, good, clean, green jobs. Um, and then uh, the next day, we went on to um, building on the Affordable Care Act. Now, you know that some people call it Obamacare. I probably say that myself. And you know that the Republicans have been trying and are still trying. There's a lawsuit right now that still is, persists to eliminate the Affordable Care Act. Well, we heard some fabulous testimony on what it has done for people and ways that we can make it even better. But you know, um, there was a, a woman there who talked about how the Affordable Care Act saved her life. Her child was born with multiple disabilities. They thought he might not live, but he did live. But the anxiety that she felt didn't go away because how was she going to be able to pay? And because he had a pre-existing condition from the moment he was born, would he eventually, um, after not too long, lose his health care altogether? And then came the Affordable Care Act, and suddenly she could breathe again and concentrate on her son. Well, she came and gave that testimony, 
And then she talked about how she got involved with one of the most amazing advocacy groups, and it was called the Little Lobbyists. And there were a group, there, there was a group of, of mom and dads who would bring their children to fight in the Capitol for the Affordable Care Act and to make sure that it wasn't reversed. Um, and so that was uh, really a pretty spectacular hearing and we're going to move forward to make the Affordable Care Act even better. Um, and then we had a um, hearing on the oversight of the failure of the grid in, in Texas. You know, people died, um, people suffered. They were uh, without power for not just a couple hours as originally the energy company told them they would be, but rather for several days. And the truth of the matter is, is that it was because the state of Texas would not be part of the national federal energy grid. They wanted to do things on, on their own. And so they were vulnerable. One of the witnesses at that hearing um, was the mayor of Houston. And he talked about how they have had a severe weather occasion for the last five years, even though they're supposed to be like once every 100 years. He also said that it was absolutely predictable and there was no reason for uh, Texas to be so devastated and the people of Texas so harmed because of the, the, the cold weather. We'll see if they're actually going to take responsibility and do something uh, about it. Obviously, that was the hope in this oversight committee to really urge them and to get Texas to do more. Um, and then, of course, there was the big tech hearing. I say, of course, because that was the big thing of the week for, for me, because I serve as the chairman of the, uh, as, uh, of the subcommittee that deals with big tech. And I was one of the co-chairs of the hearing. Over 50 members of Congress came to uh, ask questions and to hear our uh, speakers. Who were they? It was Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, which also, by the way, is Instagram. It was um, uh, Sund Sundar uh, uh, Pachai. He is the CEO of uh, Google, which, as you know, I think is also YouTube. And then there's Jack Dorsey of, of Twitter. Um, so pretty big shots, you know. There was a lot of attention paid to this. Why? Because we know that these platforms, that these companies have been largely responsible for misinformation, for disinformation, for extremism online, hate speech, and we wanted to have a hearing about what can be done about that to rein it, it, it in and to have these companies, these platforms take responsibility for what is on their, what, what they put out to the public. And, you know, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, who has actually been there before, actually admitted that he had, that, that Facebook had some responsibility for the January 6th um, uh, attack on the capital of the United States, and that a lot of the information actually had been on Facebook. That's after um, Sheryl Sandberg had actually said, oh no, it's these smaller platforms that didn't have anything to do with us, but he he's changed uh, the story to be correct. However, he did lie to me about, uh, about something else. He told me that Facebook checks every one of the advertisements, takes money, of course, um, and then they check them for accuracy. The fact of the matter is that none of the political ads actually are checked at all. Um, and we also um, talked about what, what can we do? We told these 
companies that the end of self-regulation has come, that no longer were the, we gonna let them set the rules. And several bills, including my Online Consumer Protection Act are going to be introduced that will set the rules of the road so that these companies cannot put on, online um, anything that would um, violate the laws of, of the land um, and also would not be responsible for the kind of mis and disinformation that, that we've seen and that, you know, that has led to death. Let's remember that that attack on the Capitol, five people actually died. But there's also the misinformation about the vaccine that is rampant online. Um, there's also um, that QAnon conspiracy theories that have been hosted on these various platforms before and causes people to fall into this kind of violence that we've seen. Um, so it was a, a very well uh, attended hearing and there, was, there are a lot of things that you're going to see. There was a lot of talk about children. Each one of the platforms says that they protect children under 13 years old and in fact, that kind of care is not really given to make sure that children um, and lots of moms and dads in, that testified, I mean, that were at the committee were um, endorsing that notion that we have to take care of our children. It was bipartisan. Republicans and Democrats think that they're consumers and they have had enough of big tech calling all the shots without any accountability. So well, there's gonna be some, uh, there's gonna be some changes. Some of you may have seen me on Chris Hayes' show on MSNBC or CNBC this morning uh, talking about this. It's kind of a hot story. Um, I wanted to tell you, if you haven't seen it, what's going on in Georgia. You know, the uh, Republicans who dominate the, the legislature there and the governor were very upset that Democrats had the nerve to win two Senate seats in Georgia, and they clearly vowed that that wasn't gonna happen again, and so they changed the voting, the voting rules. And so blatantly, did you know that now in Georgia, if, the, if it, it's upheld in the courts, because I'm sure someone will take it to court, if you're standing in line and you see an older person there who is having trouble waiting in line, don't you dare bring them some water. That would be a violation of the law that was signed this week in Georgia. And if you wanna vote on Sundays, because you know that uh, very often in the black community, there's souls to the polls on Sundays. So people go to church and then they go to, together to, to vote. No more Sunday voting in, uh, in Georgia. And there was uh, a member of the state legislature, a black woman, who wanted to see the bill signing. There was a ceremony, a celebration, all men, all white men, um, as the bill was signed. So she knocked on the door to go in and see. And you know what? She was arrested. She was handcuffed. She was dragged off to prison where she stayed for several hours. Her crime being that as a state legislator, she wanted to see the proceedings. It's just outrageous. And so we're gonna have a real fight on our hands, I think, not just in, in Georgia, but other states that are now re-examining their laws one of our new senators in Georgia, Senator Reverend Warnock said it this way. He said, it's, it's democracy in reverse. Instead of the voters choosing their leaders, the leaders want to choose their voters. So we have an answer though, and it's called HR1. 
actually H.R. 4.2, which restores the Voting Rights Act. But H.R. 1 sets a whole new stage for national voting rights that would apply everywhere to every state so that we're not going to have to fight these battles state by state where they want to turn back the clock and make sure that people of color, that's really what it's about, are not able to, to vote. Um, we, we passed it in the House of Representatives. It's a very big bill. It's gone over to the United States Senate, and uh, we are very hopeful that we're going to be able to get the votes. In order to do so, we may have to do something about the filibuster requiring 60 votes to pass a, a, a bill. Whatever it takes, I believe that there is the um, willingness and the stamina and the fight to be able to pass legislation that will give all Americans the right to vote. We're in an exciting time, and I'm hoping that we're gonna be able to make the kinds of changes that are really going to make our country safer, better, healthier. And finally, I wanna to talk to you just for a second about, about COVID. You know, the President of the United States had promised that in the first 100 days, of his presidency, he would have 100 million doses of the vaccines. And it looks like it's gonna be more like 200 million. So he's done a good job. I hope you're feeling the difference, that you're, it's easier now. If you're still having trouble, let us know at our office and we'll see what we can do to, to help you. Um, and the city of Chicago is moving to um, include more um, starting on next Monday, uh, include more people in, that are eligible for the vaccine. But here's the bad news. There's an uptick now in the number of cases and the number of hospitalizations. And some of the people in, uh, in charge of our healthcare in Washington are getting very worried that there may be, if we aren't careful, um, uh, another spurt in, in the virus. Do every single thing that you can. Even if you get the vaccines, make sure you, that you wear your mask and follow all the, the other protocols. And, you know, people are tired of this. We saw what happened in um, Florida when young people gathered um, on, the, on the beaches for their spring break. Um, we, we can't take anything for granted now. We were on the right trajectories. So be careful, be healthy, be well. I wish those of you who are celebrating Passover that you have a beautiful Passover. Those of you who are celebrating Easter, same to you. Have a wonderful, wonderful holiday weekend. And I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, where my handle is at Jan Schakowsky.